What is up guys? My name is Dossi Fasini and today we are talking about my desk setup for 2019. Now this is a highly anticipated video. I've, a lot of people have been asking me about this so this is long overdue. So if you're one of those people then please go ahead, pause this video, go grab some insulin because this video is about to get sweet. What does that even mean? Now everyone wants a super clean, awesome, minimal looking desk setup, including myself. And I did try to do that myself as well. But then once you actually start using the desk, you realize, you know what? I need this. I need that. I need this. Okay. This needs to be there in order for me to get my work done. Now the desk is suddenly a mess and it's like, you know what? I don't even want to work here anymore. I'm going to my couch. I'm going to watch Netflix and I'm going to work. So my goal was to find a junction right down the middle where I can do a minimal awesome desk setup that looks super clean and has the form. However, I also want it to function for me and uh, work for me just the way I like to use my desk. So before I get started, I just want you guys to know every single product that I'm going to talk about today uh, is going to be linked in the description down below. So if that's something that you're interested in and you want to support the channel, then make sure you guys go ahead and click those links and check those products out and get yourself a nice form functional desk setup. So without further ado, let's just jump right into my desk setup for 2019. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the desk and the chair. Now, this is the foundation of any desk setup. And for my desk, I went with the IKEA Bcant, Bcant, Bcant. How do you say that? Sit stand desk for two main reasons. Firstly, I needed a sit stand desk because I pretty much for my day job, I am sitting down every single day and I'm working and I already don't like that because I'm so stationary. So when I'm at home and I'm editing or if I'm editing late at night, then I want something where I can stand up and edit. And the second main reason I went with the IKEA I'm just gonna call it the IKEA B desk, um, is because it was one of the cheaper desks I could find at that time. I think now you have cheaper options as well out there in the market. So uh, yeah, there's that. However, to be honest, would I recommend that table to anybody? Probably not, like I don't like it at all. And the first thing I'm gonna do when I change my desk setup is change that desk. And that's due to several reasons. Firstly, that desk is wobbly as heck. Like even when I'm typing on it, sometimes it just wobbles. It just feels so low quality that, I mean, I mean, it, it kind of scares me sometimes. Secondly, the slate that's on these pair of legs is so thin that mounting something like this monitor is scary as heck because when I'm trying mounting it, it's literally, and even till now you can see, it's literally bending. So it's literally, I'm living in fear every single day, whether that monitor is gonna like tip over or something like that. I have no idea, but I'm gonna risk it till I get that biscuit. And I just want to mention another third issue that I'm having with it is that the quality of the materials and the actual desk is just so bad. Like I've literally had screws coming out from the legs so that now when I lift this table up, it's literally just comes off the leg from the front hinge. Like, and even the storage at the bottom, like some of these screws have come off and it's just, it's just not a good look all around. So to be honest, don't buy that desk unless you really have to or you need to. And in that case, go on Kijiji because you'll find a bunch of people probably selling it for cheap, including myself. So if you're interested and you live anywhere near Toronto, hit me up because I'm gonna sell you this for cheap. Next up is a chair and this chair that I'm actually sitting on is called the Ikea Marcus. This chair is actually quite good for the price and anywhere you look online, people are going to talk about this chair as being a bargain and I completely agree. This chair for what you get with like the lumbar support, lumbar support, I think it's pronounced, with the lumbar support, with the armrests that are non-adjustable, however, they kind of do the trick so I'm okay with it. You're able to adjust the reclining of it and then also the up and down, uh, which is quite simple to adjust. It's also got wheels on it so you can kind of move it around and also I like this headrest right here um, Another big key feature that I like is that the back of it is this breathable mesh pattern Which is super neat because sometimes when I'm just sitting there like, you know, like editing away into the night I don't want a sweaty back right? Hey, it happens. It happens to you too. Okay. So the next product that I want to talk about is the power. Now with all these electronics that you're going to have on your desk, you need to have a nice power source. And honestly, having used so many different power bars, I legit think I found the best one you can buy. This is the Nectech power strip power bar with six rotating outlets, two USB charging ports, and a six feet power extension, cord surge protector, suppressor, whatever you want to call it. Honestly, one of the main reasons I love this power bar more than any other power bar I've used is because it has rotating plug points. Now, 
if you've used other power bars before and it's actually quite silly like it boggles my mind how how people could design power bars like that where they're all just like one single strip and you always have this issue where you're trying to plug in like different plug points and some of them have like huge chunky plugs and you're trying to plug that into the power bar and now you've just used up like three spaces out of like the five that you had allocated for your desk setup. Honestly, the rotating plug points on this is a huge sell feature and I would highly recommend this to anybody who needs a power bar because this is the way to go. I just want to quickly throw in here in this power category because it kind of relates. These are cable clips that I bought by a company called Avantry or Aventry. Adventure. Man, I'm so bad with pronunciations. And these things are super awesome because they come with adhesive on the bottom. So you just gotta peel the sticker and you can stick it on to the bottom of your table or anywhere pretty much. And you can route cables through it. Next up, we're gonna talk about my computer of choice, which is right now docked at the like the external monitor that you see back there. And that is the 2016 MacBook Pro 15 inch. Now this is the first laptop with a new design change when it came out in 2016. And that is the one with the touch bar. And I've kind of been going back and forth between the MacBook Pro and also the Razer Blade 14 inch, uh, because I used to use the Razer Blade 14 inch for editing as well. But that was primarily when I used Premiere Pro for editing. Now I've kind of switched over to Final Cut Pro and honestly, I don't think I can go back. For the past year or so, I've been using Final Cut Pro and that is absolutely my favorite platform to edit. So yeah, I kind of got to stick with the MacBook Pros. Now, I did, however, pick up the newest MacBook Pro 16 inch, which may be a future video. Now on the topic of my laptop, another question I get asked quite frequently, especially when I'm editing on the train or the bus, is what the heck do you have on the back of your laptop? What's going on? So basically what I did was I got a matte black dbrand skin that I put on the top of my MacBook Pro and I have two adhesive strips that are attached on the bottom. I always needed to have an SSD plugged in just so I could edit. So especially when I'm editing on the train or a bus, then I kind of don't want like the SSD like just like flapping around like you know dangling like slapping people in the face and everything like okay now before we move on to the next category the stand that I'm using for my MacBook Pro is called the 12 South Curve for MacBook and the stand pretty much gives me exactly what I need I just want something that's matte black sleek and modern looking and allows me to open the MacBook with like one hand and it kind of just stays there at an angle so that I can also use the screen when it's open and uh, that way I have multiple screens to look at the only downside with the stand is that you can't really angle the actual stand or adjust the height of it or anything like that. All you can do is basically play with the screen. Okay, so the next category we're gonna talk about is monitors. Now, I go through monitors like an intern goes through Tic Tacs at a networking session. Like I've, I've had my fair share of monitors and the one that I've kind of settled on for the better part of the last year now is the 34 inch ultra wide 5K monitor. You know what they say, once you go ultra wide, you can't, you can't go back. It's true, the added real estate with wise is highly addictive. I honestly can't see myself going back to a regular size monitor again. Now, the clarity and the colors of this monitor are also insane. I love the image I get out of it. Everything is crisp, the quality is clean, everything looks so beautiful on it. Another reason I really like this monitor and the MacBook like combination is because all I need is one USB-C cable and it pretty much charges my MacBook Pro fully and I'm able to also display the MacBook Pro screen onto the monitor. So having that one cable solution makes things so much easier. Now the monitor actually comes with its own stand, which to be honest, I'm not a fan of. I like this look a lot better. I really like that that floating look that you see right behind me. Like I don't like having a stand there and it's kind of taking up space as well. Also this looks so much cooler, saves more space. I can put things underneath it. So the monitor stand that I'm using currently is called the Vivo Single Monitor Fully Adjustable and Articulating Desk Mount. Overall, I really like this monitor mount because it's affordable and it's very flexible in what you can do with it. And also it's, it's good quality. It's kept my monitor up but for pretty much the past year when I honestly didn't know if it would last that long. Okay, so the next section we're gonna talk about mouse and mouse pad. Now, you guessed it, pretty much like every other YouTuber out there, my mouse of choice is the MX Master. 
The version that I'm currently using is the MX Master 3, which is the one that recently came out. Now, I've always used the MX Master lineup. I've had the original MX Master, the MX Master 2, uh, the MX Master 2S, and now Logitech was kind enough to hook me up with the MX Master 3. I love how this mouse feels in my entire palm. It's comfortable, it's got a nice grip to it. It has a high DPI, so when I'm using it, I don't feel any lag whatsoever, and it works on any surface. It's got the soft cushioned scroll to it, which is really tough to describe, but it actually feels really good. The battery life is also ample and it requires very infrequent charging. Uh, so I'm able to go long bouts of usage without having the need to charge it. One feature that I absolutely love about this mouse is you're able to pair up to three devices to it and basically quick switch between them just by tapping a button on the bottom of the mouse. Now you'll notice on my desk that I also have the Apple Magic Trackpad and that's because I like using while I'm editing or while I'm doing anything on the Mac, I like using my left hand to do all the gestures and to do all the scrolling and swiping and all of that stuff. And I find that having this, especially when I'm editing really helps because I'm able to scroll through the timeline, I'm able to scroll through my media. Okay, so next section is keyboard. Okay, that that, that was slightly creepy. Let's, let's not do that again. Although I loved a lot of the features of the Logitech Craft keyboard, I had to replace it with the Apple Magic Keyboard 2. And yeah, I think this keyboard is good. The charge on it lasts a long time. And that's pretty much the main reason I went with it. Um, it has the number trackpad on the side, which I really need on my keyboards. It has a really nice low profile. It has a sleek look to it and it's very minimal. And it also has matte black slash space gray. So it matches everything else on my desk. Now, because the Apple Magic Keyboard 2 is so light and small and it's such a low profile that it sits so low to the table, I use this wrist pad here, which is made by Logitech, which I really like because it's long enough to cover the full length of the actual keyboard and it matches everything else that I have on the table being space gray or matte black. The next item I like to talk about is an iPad stand. Now I've talked about this in one of my older videos uh, where I talked about iPad Pro accessories, but I generally keep the stand on my table because I like having my iPad there for added productivity or a lack thereof. So sometimes I'll have something playing there, something that I'll watch like a YouTube video while I'm working or doing something else. And sometimes I need it in order to do effects or special effects in my videos where I draw something in. Or for example, if I'm editing a photo, then I like editing on my iPad. So I'll airdrop something over and I'll quickly edit it with the Apple Pencil. Or even now with Sidecar, I can also use it as another monitor for my MacBook. Now, I can't tell you how many times in the comments for my videos, people are asking me, dude, bro, what is that lamp, bro? That's a sick lamp. Well, today's your lucky day because I'm about to reveal that ish. It's called the Bright Tech Circle LED Lamp and it comes in black and white and it has three different adjustment settings for brightness. And it looks so good in the background or even when I'm using it. And also it's so nice to film with. So I absolutely love this lamp. So if you're interested, link in the description down below. Okay, the last and final product that I wanna talk about and that now lives on my desk all the time is the Nomad Base Station Apple Watch Edition. Now, with the death of air power, we were all looking for products that would replace that imaginary dream product that we had in our mind that would charge multiple products of ours. Now, Nomad came out swinging with a one-two punch and that is the Nomad Base Station. Honestly, the quality on this is so good. I absolutely love it. It's got a padded wireless charging surface. It's got LED indicators. It's got an ambient light sensor that dims the LED at night so that it doesn't blind you. So when I first saw Nomad release this thing, I was so stoked for it. So I had to reach out to them to see if they could hook me up. So thank you so much, Nomad, for hooking me up with this. Uh, I absolutely love it and I would highly recommend it to anybody. And the last thing I totally forgot to mention is the lights at the back of my desk. And and these are all basically Philips lights. I have a Philips Hue light strip at the back that I've kind of taped to the side of the desk. And I also have this Philips Hue bulb, uh, which is also RGB and that's inside this lamp here. Now put these together and you're able to do all the things that you can usually do with Hue. And basically I can voice control with Siri so that as soon as I enter the room, I basically ask Siri to turn on my lights and then also I can control any mood, any setting, what color lights I want and all of that good stuff um, with voice control, as well as this phone app. 
All right, so that pretty much sums up my desk setup for 2019. But the items that I've mentioned today are pretty much the items that have lived on my desk for the past year of 2019. Now, I am actually in the process of building a new desk and a new desk setup, a new studio. I'm actually overhauling this entire studio due to uh, future requirements that I have. So I'll probably be doing videos on how I rebuild the studio and also my new and latest desk setup. However, this is the desk setup that has worked for me in 2019. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these products are gonna carry forward into my next desk setup, except for the desk. I, I really don't like that desk, don't get it. Now, if you need help building your personal workstation or your desk setup, or you wanna let me know what you guys have in your desk setup and something that I can learn from, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I literally read every single comment and I reply to every single person. And I would love to learn from you guys what you guys use in your desk setups and what works for you guys. Also keep in mind that every single thing that I've discussed in this video are linked in the description down below. So if you're interested and you wanna support the channel, please go check those links out and and hook yourselves up. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it beneficial and found it motivational or inspirational to help build your personal desk setup. So if you like this video and found it beneficial and helpful to you, make sure you guys go ahead and crush that like button. And if you like content around tech, gadgets, filmmaking, and lifestyle, then make sure you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And as usual, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Scared. This thing is gonna break. Oh my god, this is such a bad idea, Tosi. Such a bad idea. Guys, I really want that Tesla Cybertruck. This was quite a torture. You have no idea having this sitting right beside me in my face as motivation just so I could get this video done in time. But I'm glad I did. Time to unbox this thing.